Hello everyone, my name is Diana Capriccio. I have the pleasure of teaching this week's lecture. It is week seven in Nursing 891. Today's date is October 15, 2021. I'll be covering the topic of conceptual models, grand theories, and theory evaluation. Note that this week's content was quite heavy, so I've tried my best to provide examples with hopes of summarizing and simplifying the information so you guys are able to comprehend things so much easier. And you're gonna notice that a lot of this material does feed off last week's week six. So therefore I won't be spending too, many, too much time focusing on definitions as it was covered last week. So let's jump into this. So the outline, what I'll be talking about, we're gonna start with an overview of theory evaluation, talk about the three-step theory evaluation, comparing evaluations, overview of concepts in grand theory, organization of conceptual framework in grand theories, analysis criteria for grand nursing theories, lastly, a general summary, and I'll talk about the discussion board questions I created. So theory analysis and evaluation, this can be found in your McEwen book in chapter five. So what is theory evaluation? So a really nice summary of theory evaluation can be told, the process of systematically examining a theory. So what you're really doing is you're ensuring the theory is valid and correct, and you're giving the theory user confidence. You're giving them the confidence needed that others have questions and they've reviewed the theory. And I'm not going to jump, I'm not going to talk too much into this because we are going to talk about it in, in the next previous slides. But you're going to notice that a lot of theorists have actually created their own criteria of theory evaluation. So the goal is to assist nurses to select an evaluation method appropriate for the theory in order to implement into practice, research, administration, and education. So firstly, we need to examine the theory origin. So you need to question, where did this come from? What is the meaning? You want to explore the purpose of a theory. Logical adequacy. So what that actually means is logical structure of concepts and their meaning. You're going to see the word usefulness pop up a lot in this lecture. And the reason being is because we keep asking ourselves the question, can nurses use this? Does it hold value? If it doesn't, that means there's literally no purpose of this theory. And lastly is testability, and that's the ability to run an experiment on the theory. So I want to make it clear, the purpose of theory evaluation is not intended to generate new information. But what it naturally does, it leads to new insights into the theory. And it does that by identifying gaps it needs to refine the theory. So what actually ends up happening is that it leads to new questions and opens up more doors for research. And really the possibilities are endless because of these new insights. And it really helps you understand relationships between concepts. And I know we've mentioned this multiple times, we're down to the question, is the theory useful? So, in the McQuayan book, there's a three-step theory evaluation. I do want to note that in your book, you are going to notice that there is anywhere from one to three steps. For the purpose of this book, we're actually going to focus on McEllis 2012 in Moody 1990 three-step theory, which is theory description, theory analysis, and theory evaluation. So step one is theory description. So what you're doing here is reviewing the historical context of the theory. So you're asking the question, what did other theorists have to say? You're really gonna go through nursing journals, really kind of research what did other theorists uh, come up with. And second of all, you're gonna examine the assumptions, concepts, and propositions. And lastly, you're gonna ask yourself the question, is the theory functional? Does it describe, explain, and predict?
So step two is theory analysis. So you're going to examine the context, sorry, the content, the structure, and the function of the theory. And you're going to ask yourself, can the framework be used? And can it be used in research, administration, education, or in practice? And you really, really need to ask yourself the question, can you understand the theory? And this has to be in a non-judgmental attitude, because really, if you can't understand the theory, what is the purpose of the theory? If your colleagues don't know what you're talking about, your theory may not even have a purpose. This brings us to our final step, step three of theory evaluation. So this is when we examine the potential contribution to the discipline and you ask yourself, does it serve a purpose? Are there favorable outcomes? This is when the final decision is made. In the event that the final decision is no, it actually challenges the creator to go back and go, kind of go back to the drawing board and either start from scratch or maybe um, clarify or modify the theory. And it makes me kind of question how many times this happens, how many times the theory evaluations fail, and does it make theories stronger or has it created new theories? So that is actually an interesting question. So when you guys did your readings, um, on page 105 in your McEwen book, you're going to see a really nice comparison chart. And I found this very useful because it is really clear um, when they compare different theorists in their evaluation criteria. And just know Ellis was actually the first pioneer in 1968 to actually create this method. So you are going to notice um, one, sorry, two major themes that keep popping up in all nine authors is the theme of complexity, simplicity, scope, and generality. So that really highlights the importance of those four themes. And theorists also made methods for middle range theories and practice theories just because how different they are. They had to have their own specialized method to compare them with. So we made it to chapter six. We're in an overview of grand nursing theories. So Fawcett and DeSanto Modea, they wanted to help us distinguish between conceptual and grand theories because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So the way I see conceptual models is it serves as a springboard to generate a hypothesis and it presents understanding of phenomenal. So broad formulations of philosophy based on an attempt to include the whole of a nurse in reality as a scholar understands it, and conceptual models are abstract and not likely to be testable, in fact. So this brings us to grand theories. So grand theories, as we know, are the most complex and widest in scope, and they are derived from conceptual models. So a really great example I want to give of a grand theory is the famous question, what is nursing? As we know, nursing is super broad. It can range anywhere from an RPN all the way up to an, uh, a nurse with her PhD. And um, it's not specific. So we're not asking the question, what is an emergency nurse? What is a mental health nurse? What is a cosmetic nurse? It is what is nursing? And we know that is a very big, complex question. So what, it, what grand theories does, it tries its very best to refine the concept and shrink it down the best they can to understand it. And we'll kind of jump into this in the next slide. It does organize domains of nursing activity, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in a second. And grand theories build connection with knowledge and nursing science, promoting the development of science. And pretty much what we want to do is implement best practice guidelines and increase predictable outcomes with grand theories. So like I was talking about before, categorization of conceptual frameworks and grand theories, because these are such complex models, we really want to kind of categorize them and organize them to break them down to understand them. So what you want to do is understand what is the scope of theory? So the most famous scope, of, uh, the most famous uh, theorists are Nightingale and Watson, and their scope of theory is philosophy. Nursing domains is a school of thought. So Watson is all about caring and becoming. There's different domains such as interaction, outcomes, and needs. 
And then, of course, our famous paradigms, which are a world a world view at looking at disciplines and a science. And keep in mind with paradigms, they can get outdated and no longer suffice the test of time. So they should always kind of be reevaluated. So let's talk more about analysis criteria for grand nursing theories. So the first thing you really want to do is actually dig a little deeper of the background of the theorist. This is when you kind of want to have a bit of a biography. So what kind of nurse were they? Where did they live? Where are they educated? Who are they, essentially? Who is this theorist making up this theory? And that leads us to our next kind of point, which is the philosophical underpinnings of the theory. This is actually when you want to understand your theorist's background, because your back, where the theorist grew up and their background, their living background can actually underpin their theory. So for example, let's just say you had a nurse theorist who came from Syria fleeing violence, came to Canada and became a nurse. That nurse is going to have specific underpinnings of their theory based on their environmental factors of growing up. And here we go again with the word usefulness. Uh, I got to really drill it into you guys. We always ask the question, is it useful? Keep in mind, grand theories tend not to be as useful just because how broad they are. So that is a challenge that grand theories do have. And we want to see the rel how reliable it is, and that's through testability. Um, also, note that grand theories can, they actually have the ability to produce middle range and practice theories. So parsimony, so what that means is you want to measure the depth of the theory. And value in extending nursing science is quite straightforward. You just pretty much want to understand the human and their environment. And lastly, major assumptions and concepts of, the, of relationships. Uh, that's pretty much the substance of the theory. So in summary, the last few slides really drilled on the idea how complex grand theory is. With that being said, it's very advanced to critique grand theory. So it should not be a nursing student. It should be a very experienced nurse critiquing grand theory just because how hard it is. And it asks the questions, do grand and middle theories hold promise and value? Grand theory is global in application and assists with science development. That is pretty much how it's summarized. The only thing with grand theory that we have to take in consideration, it can be very confusing because multiple worldviews may collide. I'll give you a personal example. So like I mentioned, a typical question for grand theory is what is nursing? So my background, um, I'm Italian and I come from a very small village in Italy. And when I told my family members I was becoming a nurse, they asked me, why are you becoming a doctor's assistant? And they were not impressed that I was becoming a nurse. Because in Italian culture or in their village, they don't view nursing as a specialty or as a valued profession. So that's kind of an example how worldviews and cultures may collide in creating grand theory. So here comes our discussion questions. So if you look at your nursing perspective book, you'll actually notice um, Fawcett talk about how multiple theorists have questioned why she hasn't divided her evaluation for qualitative and qualitative, sorry, qualitative and quantitative theories. So the question I want you guys to answer is, do you believe there should be a separate theory evaluation for qualitative and quantitative theories? Why or why not? And what is your understanding of grand theory and how does it benefit the nursing practice? Here are my references if you guys are interested, and that summarizes my presentation for week seven. Thank you guys so much for listening, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.